In this video, I will be going into depth exploring the layers of the psychedelic iceberg. The iceberg was posted on Reddit, and the link to the original post is in the description if you want to follow along the journey. Layer 2 of the iceberg is still pretty shallow, and some of the information here would be things you may even have stumbled on during researching Layer 1, but Layer 2 is pretty important, as here you will be introduced to some topics which in of themselves have multiple layers to. As such, this layer will serve more as an introduction to those subjects before we go down the rabbit hole. With that, let's get started. Transpersonal psychology is a subfield of psychology that explores and integrates the spiritual and transcendent aspects of human experience with the understanding and practices of mainstream psychology. It focuses on the study of consciousness, personal transformation, and the connections between individuals and the larger cosmos. Transpersonal psychology emerged in the 1960s and 1970s as a response to the limitations of traditional, behaviorist, and psychoanalytic approaches to psychology. Pioneering figures in this field include Abraham Maslow, Stanislav Grof, and Anthony Sudich, among others. Transpersonal psychology seeks to explore and understand the spiritual dimensions of human existence and consciousness. It emphasizes that psychological well-being is not solely a matter of individual mental health, but also involves the integration of spiritual, existential, and transcendent experiences. It delves into altered and expanded states of consciousness which can be induced through practices like meditation, yoga, psychedelic experiences, and near-death experiences. These states are seen as opportunities for personal growth and self-discovery. Transpersonal psychology often incorporates a cross-cultural perspective, drawing on spiritual and wisdom traditions from various cultures and seeking common threads in human spiritual experiences. Sandoz is a pharmaceutical company that is well known for its role in the early history of psychedelic research and the development of the psychedelic substance, LSD. Sandoz was founded in Basel, Switzerland in 1886 by Dr. Alfred Kern and Edward Sandoz. The company initially focused on the production of dyes and chemicals, but soon expanded into the pharmaceutical industry. Sandoz played a pivotal role in the discovery of LSD. In 1938, Swiss chemist Albert Hoffmann, working for Sandoz, synthesized LSD. While researching the properties of ergot fungus, Hoffmann accidentally ingested a small amount of the compound in 1943, leading to the first recorded LSD trip. After Hoffmann's discovery, Sandoz recognized the potential of LSD and began researching its applications, particularly in the fields of psychiatry and psychology. This led to a series of experiments and clinical trials, exploring the therapeutic potential of LSD. Sandoz introduced LSD under the trade name Delicid to the medical and psychiatric community in the 1940s and 1950s. It was initially viewed as a promising psychiatric medication with potential applications in psychotherapy. During the 1960s, LSD made its way into the counterculture movement, popularized by figures like Timothy Leary. This led to increased recreational use of the substance, as well as negative associations and increased government regulation. Due to concerns about the safety and potential misuse of LSD, the substance was gradually restricted and eventually made illegal in many countries during the 1960s and 1970s. Sandoz ceased the production of LSD in the mid-1960s. Sacred geometry is a term that refers to the belief that certain geometric shapes and proportions have a deep spiritual, symbolic, or mystical significance. It's the study of shapes, patterns, and proportions that are often found in religious art, architecture, and various aspects of the natural world. The idea is that these geometric forms hold a special and universal meaning that transcends culture and time. 
Sacred geometry has been a part of human history for thousands of years and can be found in many different cultures and civilizations. Ancient Egyptians, Greeks, Chinese, and Native Americans, among others, incorporated sacred geometric principles into their art, architecture, and religious symbolism. Some of the most commonly referenced geometric shapes in sacred geometry include the circle, square, triangle, and various polygons. These shapes are believed to hold unique meanings and properties. For example, the circle often represents unity and the divine, while the triangle symbolizes balance and harmony. Sacred geometry also explores the mathematical relationships and proportions between geometric shapes. The most famous of these is the golden ratio, approximately 1618, which is believed to represent divine proportion and is found in various natural phenomena, art, and architecture. Sacred geometry is frequently associated with religious symbols. For example, the flower of life, an interlocking hexagonal pattern, is considered a symbol of creation and the unity of all life. The vesica pieces, formed by the intersection of two circles, is often seen as a symbol of the divine feminine. Psychedelic tolerance, also known as drug tolerance, is a phenomenon where the effects of a psychedelic substance are reduced or diminished when an individual uses the substance repeatedly in a short period of time. This means that if someone takes the same psychedelic substance shortly after their initial experience, they may not experience the same level of intensity or altered perception as they did during their first use. Tolerance can develop rapidly with some psychedelics and it requires higher doses to achieve the same effects. Some psychedelics share cross-tolerance, which means that tolerance developed to one psychedelic substance can also affect the response to other psychedelics. For example, if an individual develops tolerance to LSD, it may also affect their response to psilocybin, found in magic mushrooms, or other similar substances. That's crazy, man. Have you ever tried DMT? Is a phrase often associated with the American comedian, podcast host, and commentator Joe Rogan. He has mentioned it during his podcast, The Joe Rogan Experience, and it has become somewhat of a meme and a catchphrase among his fans. The quote is often used to express amazement, astonishment, or curiosity about the profound and often mind-altering effects of the psychedelic substance DMT, dimethyltryptamine. Salvia extract refers to a concentrated form of salvinorin A, the active compound found in the leaves of the salvia divinorum plant. Salvia divinorum is a psychoactive plant native to the Sierra Mazateca region of Mexico and has been traditionally used by indigenous peoples for spiritual and shamanic purposes. Salvia extract is created by isolating and concentrating the psychoactive compound, making it more potent than consuming the whole leaves of the plant. Users often struggle to put their experiences into words because of the bizarre and abstract nature of salvia trips. These may include a feeling of traveling to other dimensions, encounters with unusual beings or entities, and distorted perceptions of time and space. Some users feel like they are part of an entirely different reality. Unlike some other psychedelics, salvia is not typically associated with euphoric or positive emotions. Instead, users may feel confusion, fear, or discomfort. Owsley Stanley, whose full name was Augustus Owsley Stanley III, was a notable figure in the counterculture and psychedelic movements of the 1960s. He is primarily known for his role as a prominent underground chemist and the production of high-quality LSD. Owsley Stanley was born on January 19, 1935, in Kentucky, USA. He came from a well-to-do family, but chose to embrace a counterculture lifestyle in his adult years. Owsley Stanley became renowned for producing and distributing exceptionally pure and potent LSD during the 1960s. His LSD, often referred to as Owsley Acid, was highly sought after for its quality. It played a significant role in the psychedelic and cultural movements of the era. 
In addition to his involvement with psychedelics, Stanley worked as a skilled audio engineer for the Grateful Dead, a prominent rock band closely associated with the counterculture movement. His contributions to the band's sound and recording technology were significant. Owsley Stanley faced several arrests and legal troubles related to his involvement in the production and distribution of LSD. These legal issues ultimately led to his departure from the LSD manufacturing scene. Owsley Stanley is remembered as a key figure in the history of LSD and the counterculture movement. His high quality LSD was considered a catalyst for many transformative experiences during the 1960s. He passed away in a car accident on March 12, 2011. The acid tests were a series of experimental events that took place in the mid-1960s and played a significant role in the counterculture movement of that era. These events were organized by author Ken Kesey and his group of friends known as the Merry Pranksters. The acid tests were notable for their connection to the use of LSD. The acid tests began in the San Francisco Bay Area in the mid-1960s during a time of significant social and cultural change. Author Ken Kesey, who was known for his novel, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, became interested in the mind-altering effects of LSD and began experimenting with the substance. Ken Kesey and his group, the Merry Pranksters, started hosting parties and gatherings where they would distribute LSD to participants. These gatherings were initially known as electric Kool-Aid acid tests because they often involved people drinking LSD-laced Kool-Aid. The acid tests aimed to create multi-sensory and immersive experiences. They featured a combination of music, light shows, film projections, and other artistic and sensory elements designed to enhance the psychedelic experience. The acid tests were instrumental in the early development of the San Francisco psychedelic music scene, The Grateful Dead, then known as the Warlocks, provided musical accompaniment at several acid tests and played a central role in shaping the emerging counterculture. The phrase, I'm God, can take on a specific meaning related to the profound and often ego-dissolving experiences that some individuals report during intense psychedelic trips, especially with substances like LSD or psilocybin mushrooms. It reflects the altered state of consciousness and the dissolution of the self that can occur under the influence of these substances. One of the hallmark effects of certain psychedelics is the experience of ego dissolution, where the boundaries between the self and the external world become blurred or even disappear entirely. In this state, individuals may feel a profound sense of interconnectedness with the universe, with other people, and with all of existence. It is an expression of the feeling that, during a trip, one has transcended their individual ego and merged with a universal or divine consciousness. It's a way of describing the sense of oneness with the cosmos, where the distinction between self and other dissolves. The feeling of unity with the universe and the dissolution of ego can create a perception of limitless potential and agency. People might believe that they have the power to shape their own reality and influence the events and circumstances in their lives. The belief in interconnectedness asserts that everything in the universe is connected or interrelated. It suggests that the boundaries and distinctions we perceive are a result of our limited human perspective and that, on a deeper level, there is a unity that underlies all of existence. Proponents of this ideology argue that individual consciousness is a reflection or manifestation of the greater universal consciousness or intelligence. They believe that we, as individuals, are not separate from this universal consciousness, but rather expressions of it. In this sense, we are the universe becoming self-aware and observing itself through our individual experiences. These ideas have been echoed in various mystical and spiritual traditions throughout history, including certain branches of Hinduism, Buddhism, Taoism, and indigenous belief systems. 
For example, the Hindu concept of Atman and Brahman highlights the individual self, Atman, as inseparable from the ultimate reality, Brahman. The DMN stands for the default mode network, which is a functional brain network that is active when a person is not focused on the outside world or engaged in a specific task. Instead, it becomes active when the mind is at rest or engaged in spontaneous, self-referential thoughts. The default mode network is a critical component of the brain's overall functional architecture and plays a significant role in various cognitive processes. The DMN is most active when an individual is at rest, not concentrating on the external environment and letting their mind wander. During these moments, the network facilitates spontaneous and self-referential thought processes, such as daydreaming, mind wandering, or introspection. The default mode network can be influenced or altered by various factors, including meditation, psychedelics, and some mental health conditions. For example, studies suggest that certain psychedelic substances, like psilocybin, can temporarily disrupt the DMN, leading to experiences of ego dissolution and a sense of interconnectedness. Aberrant activity in the default mode network has been associated with certain mental health conditions. Overactivity in the DMN has been linked to rumination and symptoms of depression, while alterations in DMN function have been implicated in conditions like schizophrenia and autism. The Dark Side of the Moon is the eighth studio album by the English rock band Pink Floyd. Released in 1973, it is one of the most acclaimed and best-selling albums in the history of rock music. The album is a concept album that explores themes related to the human experience, such as time, death, mental illness, and the pressures of modern life. The famous album cover features a prism and a beam of light, which has become an iconic image in rock history. The album is known for its progressive rock sound, innovative use of studio effects, and seamless song transitions. It includes hit songs like Money, Time, and Us and Them. The album's lyrics and music are often associated with psychedelic and philosophical themes. The Dark Side of the Moon is known for its thematic coherence, with songs flowing into one another to create a continuous listening experience. It's often seen as a meditation on the human condition and the passage of time. The Dark Side of the Moon has sold millions of copies and spent years on the Billboard 200 chart. It has been reissued multiple times and its popularity endures. The phrase Nixon lied about drugs is a concise statement often used to refer to the controversial and widely criticized drug policies and statements made by Richard Nixon, the 37th President of the United States. Specifically, this phrase usually alludes to several key aspects of the Nixon administration's approach to drug policy and the accusations of deception or misinformation. The Nixon administration is associated with launching what became known as the War on Drugs in the early 1970s. This was a comprehensive set of policies and initiatives aimed at combating drug abuse and the illegal drug trade in the United States. Critics of the Nixon administration argue that the government deliberately misrepresented the extent of the drug problem in the United States. They allege that Nixon and his administration used inflated or misleading statistics to justify their aggressive anti-drug initiatives, including the Controlled Substances Act of 1970 and the creation of the Drug Enforcement Administration, DEA. During this period, there was a particular emphasis on marijuana, cannabis, with claims that it was a gateway drug to more dangerous substances. The infamous anti-marijuana propaganda film, Reefer Madness, was circulated during this era, fueling fears and misconceptions about the drug. Some critics suggest that Nixon's approach to the war on drugs had political motives, 
including the targeting of anti-war and countercultural movements. They argue that drug policies were used to undermine and discredit these movements. John Lilly was a prominent American physician, neuroscientist, psychoanalyst, and writer. He is best known for his groundbreaking work in the fields of neurobiology, consciousness exploration, and interspecies communication, particularly with dolphins. John Cunningham Lilly was born on January 6, 1915, in St. Paul, Minnesota. He received a medical degree from Dartmouth Medical School in 1942 and later worked as a physician and psychoanalyst. Lilly's early work focused on neurophysiology and brain research. He conducted pioneering experiments involving sensory deprivation tanks, isolation tanks, which aimed to explore the effects of sensory isolation on consciousness. His research in this area laid the groundwork for later studies on altered states of consciousness. John Lilly is perhaps best known for his work with dolphins. He believed that dolphins were highly intelligent beings and conducted experiments in the 1950s and 1960s to study their communication abilities. He developed the concept of the dolphin-human relationship and proposed that dolphins might be capable of communicating with humans through a symbolic language. His research in this area led to his popular book, Man and Dolphin, in 1961. Lilly was also involved in exploring altered states of consciousness through the use of psychedelic substances, such as LSD and ketamine. He conducted experiments on himself and with others to investigate the nature of consciousness and the boundaries of human experience. Lilly's work with isolation tanks, which are sensory deprivation chambers filled with salt water, was instrumental in the development of the technique. These tanks are designed to cut off external sensory input, allowing individuals to experience altered states of consciousness and deep relaxation. Lilly's research contributed to the popularization of isolation tanks in the 1960s and 1970s. John Lilly authored numerous books and scientific papers throughout his career. Some of his notable works include Programming and Metaprogramming in the Human Biocomputer, 1972, Center of the Cyclone, 1972, and The Scientist, 1978 which detail his experiences and ideas related to consciousness, exploration. Lilly's work, especially his experiments with altered states of consciousness and his unconventional views on dolphins, was controversial and faced criticism from the scientific community. His later writings on topics like communication with extraterrestrial beings and the use of ketamine were considered highly unconventional. In his later years, John Lilly continued to explore consciousness and human potential. He remained a polarizing figure within the fields of neuroscience and consciousness studies until his death on September 30, 2001. Serotonin syndrome is a potentially life-threatening condition that occurs when there is an excess of serotonin, a neurotransmitter, in the brain. Serotonin is involved in the regulation of various bodily functions, including mood, appetite, and body temperature. When too much serotonin accumulates in the central nervous system, it can lead to a range of symptoms and complications. Agitation and restlessness, confusion, rapid heart rate, dilated pupils, muscle rigidity and twitching, excessive sweating, shivering or tremors, high blood pressure, high body temperature, hyperthermia, nausea and vomiting, diarrhea, headache, goosebumps on the skin. In severe cases, serotonin syndrome can lead to life-threatening complications, such as seizures, high fever, irregular heartbeat, and loss of consciousness. Serotonin syndrome most commonly occurs when someone takes medications that increase serotonin levels in the brain. This can result from using certain recreational drugs such as MDMA, ecstasy, or hallucinogenic substances, which can also increase serotonin levels. 
Spider Experiments refers to a specific set of experiments conducted by Swiss chemist Albert Hoffman, best known for his discovery of LSD. Albert Hoffman conducted a series of experiments involving the administration of psychedelic substances, including LSD, to spiders. These experiments aim to study the effects of these substances on the spider's web-spinning behavior. Hoffman exposed the spiders to small amounts of LSD and observed their behavior during the drug's effects. He documented changes in their web-spinning patterns, such as irregularities in the shape and structure of the webs. Hoffman's experiments found that spiders under the influence of LSD produced webs that were often structurally different from their normal, non-drugged counterparts. The altered web patterns included irregular spiral shapes and distorted radial lines. These results suggested that the spider's perception and motor coordination were affected by the psychedelic substance. A male-female therapy dyad refers to a therapeutic approach where two therapists, one male and one female, work together as a team to guide and support individuals or patients during psychedelic therapy sessions. This model is used in the administration of psychedelic assisted therapy, which involves the use of psychedelic substances such as psilocybin or MDMA to facilitate therapeutic experiences. Psychedelic therapy can bring up deeply personal and sensitive issues, including those related to gender, identity, and personal history. By having therapists of both genders present, it is believed that individuals may feel more comfortable discussing and processing these sensitive topics. Some individuals may find it easier to open up to a therapist of their own gender, while others may prefer speaking to someone of the opposite gender. The male-female therapy dyad aims to cater to a range of preferences and needs. The presence of both male and female therapists allows for a more holistic perspective on the therapeutic process. It can be especially relevant when exploring issues related to gender, relationships, and sexuality during a psychedelic experience. The Grateful Dead was an iconic American rock band known for its unique and influential musical style, improvisational performances, and a dedicated fan base that continues to thrive. Formed in 1965, the band played a pivotal role in the counterculture movement of the 1960s and 1970s. The Grateful Dead was founded in Palo Alto, California by a group of musicians, including Jerry Garcia, Bob Weir, Ron Pigpen, McKernan, Phil Lesh, and Bill Kreutzmann. Over the years, several other members joined and left the band. The Grateful Dead's music defied easy categorization. It blended elements of rock, folk, blues, and psychedelia. Their improvisational approach to music, characterized by extended live performances and jam sessions, set them apart from many other bands of their era. The band's imagery and album covers often featured psychedelic art and symbolism, contributing to the association with the counterculture and the use of psychedelic substances. The band's legacy extends far beyond their music. The Grateful Dead are associated with the counterculture movement, the summer of love, and a sense of communal spirit. Their music and message continue to resonate with fans who value the ideals of peace, love, and artistic expression. After the Grateful Dead disbanded in 1995, former members pursued various musical projects. Notably, Bob Weir and Phil Lesh continued to perform together in different configurations. Integration refers to the process of incorporating insights, experiences, and lessons gained during a psychedelic journey into one's daily life. It involves making sense of the profound or challenging experiences that may occur during a psychedelic trip and using them for personal growth and well-being. Integration is a crucial aspect of responsible and therapeutic psychedelic use. Psychedelic experiences can be highly transformative and may bring about deep insights, emotional release, and newfound perspectives. Integration is the practice of making meaning out of these experiences and understanding how they relate to one's life and personal growth. 
Integration is not just about understanding one's experiences, but also about implementing changes in one's behavior and lifestyle based on the insights gained during the psychedelic journey. This might include making healthier life choices, improving relationships, or pursuing personal goals. Bicycle Day is a term associated with a significant event in the history of psychedelic substances, particularly LSD. It is a day celebrated by some individuals in the psychedelic community. Bicycle Day marks the anniversary of a pivotal moment involving the discovery of the psychoactive effects of LSD. Bicycle Day is observed on April 19th each year. Bicycle Day commemorates an event that occurred on April 19th, 1943. On that day, Swiss chemist Albert Hoffman intentionally ingested a small dose of LSD, which he had first synthesized a few years earlier while researching ergot derivatives at the pharmaceutical company Sandoz. After ingesting what he considered a small dose, 250 micrograms of LSD, Hoffman began to experience profound alterations in his perception and consciousness. These effects were much stronger than anticipated. As a result, Hoffman's bicycle ride home from the laboratory, which should have been a short journey, became an extraordinary and, at times, challenging adventure. Empathogens is a term used to describe a class of psychoactive substances that are known for their capacity to induce feelings of empathy, emotional openness, and a heightened sense of connection and emotional bonding with others. These substances are often associated with the enhancement of social and interpersonal experiences. Empathogens are distinct from classic psychedelics and stimulants as they primarily influence emotional and social aspects of consciousness rather than causing hallucinations or primarily increasing energy levels. Empathogens often induce a sense of emotional vulnerability and openness, allowing individuals to share their thoughts and feelings more freely with others. They can reduce feelings of fear and anxiety, making it easier for people to engage in conversations and social interactions. Empathogens have been explored for their potential therapeutic benefits, particularly in the context of MDMA as a tool for MDMA-assisted psychotherapy, often used to treat PTSD and relationship issues. Methylone is a synthetic empathogen that shares some similarities with MDMA in terms of its effects and mechanism of action. While 2CB is primarily considered a psychedelic, it is also classified as an empathogen due to its unique combination of empathogenic and psychedelic effects. It is sometimes referred to as a psychedelic with a heart. Afterglow is a term commonly used in the context of psychedelic experiences to describe a period of positive feelings and mental clarity that occurs after the acute effects of a psychedelic substance have subsided. This term is often applied to experiences with substances like LSD, psilocybin, MDMA, and other psychedelics. The afterglow is characterized by a sense of well-being, mental clarity, and emotional positivity that can persist for hours, days, or even longer following the peak of the psychedelic experience. I personally would describe it as the opposite of a hangover after binge drinking. After the intense, sometimes introspective, or emotionally charged phase of a psychedelic trip, the afterglow is marked by a clear and lucid state of mind. It is as if the mental fog associated with the peak of the experience has lifted. Individuals often report feeling exceptionally positive, content, and emotionally balanced during the afterglow. It is common to experience a heightened sense of well-being and happiness. The duration of an afterglow can vary widely from person to person and depends on factors such as the specific substance used, the dosage, and individual sensitivity. It can last for several hours, a day, or even longer. In some cases, people report that the positive effects of the afterglow continue for weeks, influencing their behavior and outlook on life. 
thumbprinting is a term associated with the consumption of a powerful and potentially dangerous psychedelic substance called datura, which is derived from various species of the datura plant. Thumbprinting is an extreme and risky method of using datura and involves applying a concentrated extract or plant material directly to the skin, usually on the thumb or another part of the body, with the expectation that it will be absorbed through the skin. Datra, also known as Jimson Weed, Moonflower, or Devil's Trumpet, is a plant that contains a group of naturally occurring tropane alkaloids, including scopolamine, atropine, and hyoscyamin. These substances have hallucinogenic and deliriant properties. Datura is considered one of the most potent and unpredictable hallucinogenic plants. The effects can vary greatly from one person to another, and even from one use to another, making it a highly risky choice for a psychedelic experience. Thumbprinting involves creating a concentrated extract or paste from datura plant material, such as leaves, seeds, or flowers, and then applying this extract directly to the skin, typically on the thumb or another area, with thin skin and good blood flow. The belief is that the active compounds will be absorbed through the skin and produce hallucinogenic effects. Orange sunshine refers to a specific type of LSD that gained notoriety during the 1960s as one of the purest and most famous varieties of the drug. It was often described as having a distinct orange-colored appearance and was highly sought after for its supposed quality. The term orange sunshine is most closely associated with the group known as the Brotherhood of Eternal Love. This loosely affiliated group of individuals was involved in the production and distribution of LSD, particularly during the late 1960s and early 1970s. The Brotherhood of Eternal Love was responsible for distributing orange sunshine, primarily in California, but it had a reach that extended across the United States and even internationally. Orange Sunshine LSD became synonymous with the counterculture and the hippie movement of the 1960s. It was seen as a symbol of rebellion, artistic expression, and a desire for personal and societal transformation. The production and distribution of Orange Sunshine and other forms of LSD led to legal consequences for many involved in the Brotherhood of Eternal Love. Several members were arrested, and some served prison sentences. Purple MDMA refers to a form of MDMA. The term typically indicates MDMA tablets or capsules that are colored purple, but it doesn't necessarily imply a unique or distinct chemical variation of the drug. Instead, it's a reference to the color of the pill or capsule and is used for marketing or branding purposes. The color of an MDMA tablet or capsule does not necessarily reflect its purity or the specific contents. The actual composition of the pill can vary widely and it may contain MDMA in varying concentrations as well as other substances or adulterants. Psilocybin and smoking may refer to two different things. One is, researchers have indeed explored the use of psilocybin, the active compound found in psychedelic mushrooms, as a potential treatment for tobacco addiction. The approach involves using psilocybin in combination with psychotherapy to help people quit smoking. During the psilocybin session, individuals are encouraged to explore their relationship with tobacco and understand the underlying psychological and emotional factors contributing to their addiction. Participants often report a significant reduction in cravings for tobacco during and after the psilocybin session. The heightened awareness and emotional processing that psilocybin facilitates may lead to a shift in one's perspective on smoking. Psilocybin itself has a low potential for addiction or abuse, which makes it a safer option compared to traditional addiction treatments. Another definition it can refer to is that of mixing psilocybin and cannabis. Cannabis is known for its potential to enhance the effects of psychedelics. 
including those of psilocybin. When combined, some individuals report increased intensity of visual and sensory experiences. Some individuals use cannabis to counteract the anxiety or nervousness that can sometimes accompany the come up of a psilocybin experience. It can promote relaxation and reduce tension. For some individuals, the combination of psilocybin and cannabis can be overwhelming, potentially leading to increased anxiety, confusion, or paranoia. This effect can be particularly pronounced in higher doses. Shamanism is a spiritual and healing practice that has been present in various cultures around the world for thousands of years. It involves the role of a shaman, a practitioner who serves as an intermediary between the human and spiritual realms. The central figure in shamanism is the shaman, also known as a medicine person, healer, or spiritual guide. The shaman is believed to possess unique spiritual and healing abilities that allow them to connect with the spirit world. Shamanic practices often involve entering altered states of consciousness through various means, such as drumming, chanting, dancing, or the use of hallucinogenic substances like ayahuasca or peyote. In these altered states, the shaman believes they can access the spirit realm and communicate with spirits, deities, and other worldly entities. Shamanic practices often involve rituals and ceremonies that are culturally specific. These may include purification rituals, divination, soul retrieval, and rites of passage. The rituals are designed to bring balance and harmony to individuals, communities, and the natural world. Hippie flipping is a term used in drug culture to describe the practice of combining two specific psychoactive substances, MDMA and psilocybin mushrooms. Some people take MDMA first to experience the empathetic and energetic effects, followed by psilocybin mushrooms once the MDMA effects start to wear off. This is done to combine the sociability and emotional openness of MDMA with the introspection and altered consciousness induced by psilocybin. In other cases, individuals may ingest both substances at the same time, creating a blend of the effects of both drugs throughout the experience. Lemon Tech is a method used to enhance and expedite the onset of the psychedelic effects of psilocybin containing mushrooms, magic mushrooms. It involves preparing the mushrooms by grinding them into a fine powder or chopping them into very small pieces and then mixing them with freshly squeezed lemon juice or another acidic liquid. The idea behind the lemon tech method is to maximize the conversion of psilocybin into psilocin, the active compound that produces the psychedelic effects and to potentially reduce the time it takes for these effects to kick in. Peyote is endangered is a statement highlighting the conservation concerns surrounding peyote, scientifically known as Lapophora williamsi, a small, spineless cactus that contains the natural psychedelic compound mescaline. This plant is native to the southwestern United States and northern Mexico and is of significant cultural, spiritual, and medicinal importance to various indigenous tribes, including the Huichol and Native American Church. Peyote has faced a severe threat due to overharvesting. For many years, it has been collected for its spiritual and medicinal use, as well as for recreational purposes. Overharvesting has led to a decline in natural peyote populations. The natural habitat of peyote is being threatened by urban development, agricultural expansion, and climate change. These factors reduce the available space for peyote to grow. Peyote is a slow-growing plant. It can take many years for a single button, the part of the cactus containing mescaline, to mature. Overharvesting has outpaced the plant's ability to reproduce and regenerate. In many areas where peyote grows, there is little to no regulation on its harvesting. 
This lack of oversight has contributed to the endangerment of the plant. The declining populations of peyote have raised concerns among indigenous communities that rely on the cactus for spiritual and medicinal purposes. Peyote is considered a sacrament in the Native American church and its use is integral to various tribal ceremonies. The Philosopher's Stone is a legendary and mythical substance from the realms of alchemy and mysticism. It has captured the imagination of people for centuries and its concept has been central to various esoteric and philosophical traditions. The nature and properties of the Philosopher's Stone have been described in diverse ways, but it is most famously known for its supposed ability to transform base metals into noble metals, like turning lead into gold, and for its potential to grant immortality through an elixir of life. The most renowned aspect of the Philosopher's Stone is its purported ability to transmute or transform base metals, typically lead, into noble metals, especially gold. This was one of the primary goals of alchemy, the transformation of lesser substances into poorer, more valuable ones. In addition to transmutation, the Philosopher's Stone was believed to produce an elixir of life. This elixir, when ingested, was thought to grant immortality, eternal youth, and protection against disease. Pursuit of the elixir of life has been a central theme in many ancient and mystical traditions. The search for the Philosopher's Stone is also seen as an allegory for the quest for spiritual enlightenment and inner transformation. It is often associated with the idea of achieving a state of inner purity and spiritual illumination. The process of creating the Philosopher's Stone was considered a complex and mystical undertaking. Alchemists believed it involved a series of stages and transformations symbolized by various alchemical symbols and processes, often depicted in cryptic and symbolic language. Ayahuasca is a powerful and ancient psychedelic brew, traditionally used in indigenous Amazonian shamanic rituals for healing, spiritual exploration, and self-discovery. It is made from a combination of two main ingredients, the Banisteriopsis, Gayapi vine, and the leaves of the Psychotria, Viridis, or Diplopteris, Cabrerana plant. The key active compounds in ayahuasca are the psychoactive alkaloids, harmine, harmaline, and DMT. Ayahuasca ceremonies are typically conducted in a sacred and carefully prepared ceremonial space. This space is considered a bridge between the physical and spiritual realms. It may include elements like altars, sacred objects, and natural elements like plants, leaves, and water. Experienced and trained shamans or healers, often called ayahuasqueros, play a central role in ayahuasca ceremonies. They are believed to have a special connection with the spirit world and act as intermediaries between it and the participants. Shamans guide and protect participants throughout the ceremony, helping them navigate the psychedelic experience and access healing and insights. Ikaros are traditional songs or chants that the shaman sings during the ceremony. These songs are believed to help create a safe and supportive environment, guide the energy of the ceremony, and communicate with the spirit world. Ikaros are often unique to each shaman and can be a deeply spiritual and transformative aspect of the experience. Purging, such as vomiting and diarrhea, is considered an essential part of the healing process in ayahuasca ceremonies. It is believed to cleanse both the physical body and the spirit. Participants often embrace purging as a form of releasing negative energies and toxins. Ayahuasca ceremonies are often sought for their therapeutic and healing potential. Participants may experience emotional release, gain insight into personal issues, and confront unresolved traumas. The brew is believed to facilitate these processes by allowing individuals to access their subconscious and connect with the spirit world. Nick Sand, whose full name was Nicholas Francis Sand, was a counterculture figure known for his involvement in the production and distribution of LSD during the 1960s and 1970s. 
he played a significant role in the underground manufacture of LSD, particularly the creation of a type known as Orange Sunshine. Nick Sand was born on May 10, 1941, in Brooklyn, New York. He came from a relatively conventional background, with no apparent early indications of becoming involved in the counterculture or psychedelic movement. However, like many of his generation, he was drawn to the cultural and social upheavals of the 1960s. Nick Sand's involvement in the production of LSD began in the mid-1960s when he connected with the Brotherhood of Eternal Love, a group based in Southern California that was heavily involved in the distribution of LSD and other drugs. Sand, along with his partner Tim Scully, operated a clandestine LSD laboratory in California and was responsible for manufacturing large quantities of high-quality LSD, most notably the Orange Sunshine brand. In 1969, Nick Sand and Tim Scully were arrested by law enforcement authorities. Sand was charged with conspiracy to manufacture and distribute LSD. Both were eventually convicted and Sand spent several years in prison. After his release from prison, Nick Sand distanced himself from the drug manufacturing scene and focused on different aspects of his life. He became involved in spiritual and contemplative practices and spoke about the potential benefits of psychedelics for personal growth and consciousness expansion. Nick Sand passed away on April 24, 2017, at the age of 75. His life remains a complex and controversial chapter in the history of psychedelics, marked by both legal troubles and a belief in the positive potential of these substances for personal and spiritual growth. Much like hippie flipping, Candy flipping is a slang term used in drug culture to describe the practice of combining two potent psychoactive substances, MDMA and LSD. Some people take LSD, acid first, experiencing the psychedelic effects, followed by MDMA, ecstasy, once the LSD effects start to take hold. This is done to combine the visual and sensory enhancements of LSD with the emotional openness and sociability of MDMA. In other cases, individuals may ingest both substances at the same time, creating a blend of the effects of both drugs throughout the experience. The Summer of Love refers to a cultural and social phenomenon that occurred in the United States, particularly in San Francisco during the summer of 1967. It is often associated with the counterculture movement of the 1960s and the broader social and political changes of that era. The Summer of Love was characterized by a convergence of youth, music, art, and social activism, and it remains a symbol of the spirit of that time. The mid-1960s were marked by significant social and political upheaval, including the civil rights movement, the Vietnam War, and various protests and demonstrations. Many young people were dissatisfied with the status quo and sought alternatives to what they saw as a rigid and conformist society. The Summer of Love was centered in the Haight-Ashbury district of San Francisco. It became the epicenter of the counterculture movement, attracting thousands of young people who were searching for a more liberated and communal way of life. The Summer of Love is closely associated with the emergence of the hippie counterculture. Hippies rejected traditional social norms and embraced ideas of peace, love, freedom, and communal living. They often advocated for nonviolence, environmentalism, and a rejection of materialism. The music of the era played a significant role in the Summer of Love. Iconic bands like the Beatles, the Rolling Stones, and the Grateful Dead, along with artists like Jimi Hendrix and Janis Joplin, contributed to the sound of the counterculture. Festivals, including the Monterey Pop Festival, became platforms for this music and culture. The use of psychedelic drugs, such as LSD, was prevalent during this period. Some individuals believed that these substances could expand their consciousness and contribute to personal and spiritual growth. The use of drugs 
also played a role in the development of the counterculture's art and music. The Summer of Love featured experiments in communal living, with young people sharing housing and resources in the Haight-Ashbury district and other communities. This was an attempt to create a more utopian and cooperative way of life. The phrase, if it's bitter, it's a spitter, is a popular saying in the realm of recreational drug use, particularly among those who use hallucinogenic substances like LSD or psychedelic research chemicals. This phrase serves as a cautionary warning to individuals about the taste of certain substances, especially blotter paper or tabs that may contain potentially dangerous compounds. The idea behind this saying is that if you taste a substance such as a blotter of LSD or another hallucinogenic compound, and it has a notably bitter or unpleasant taste, it may not be what it is claimed to be. In some cases, a bitter taste can be an indication that the substance is not a genuine hallucinogen, but potentially a different, more harmful drug or a research chemical. LSD itself is typically tasteless, or it may have a very subtle metallic taste due to the ink on blotter paper. Genuine LSD should not produce a strong, bitter, or unpleasant taste. However, some research chemicals or other substances, which can be dangerous or have adverse effects, may have a pronounced bitter taste. This concludes layer two of the psychedelic iceberg. Like and subscribe.